Sabir's owner of a boutique web design studio specializing in custom websites and blogs. You can visit me on the web at beersdesign.com. This video discusses the difference between pages and posts in WordPress. Each of my training videos are designed for novice users and are broken down into small, simple segments. Let's get started. So I have open here my training demo site, and this is the home page that I have set up. And there's a couple of other pages here and a link to the blog area of the site. Now, as you can see, home has just the heading and image that we um, used earlier to teach you guys how to insert and position images and resize them in WordPress. You can look at a couple of other pages and see how they are set up. Oh, there's no text on that one. Now, as you notice, when I click these, they look pretty much like regular web pages. It looks um, like a quite traditional website. When I click to blog, however, you can see that you have the post title and the content. We have some metadata, which is, in this case, the date, what category it's posted to. This edit link is only showing up because I'm logged in to the dashboard. This wouldn't show to your users. It shows me the comments and email this post. These things are all controlled by your theme and also some plugins that you may have installed. The next one is Hello World, Sports 2, Movies 2, another Hello World, and it goes on to the next page to additional posts. Now each of these headings, if I click it, it's going to take me to a page with only that one post on it. It's the single view. And here there's uh, an opportunity for related posts to show. In a real blog with real content, you would be able to um, have a list of related posts if that plugin were present. And there's also an area where people can comment and leave comments. There are no comments showing because there aren't any. This is not a publicly uh, promoted blog at all. This is just for training, so I wouldn't expect to have any comments. But as you can see, this page, although the, the overall formatting is very similar, this page, which is a single blog post, looks different than a single page. There's additional information here related to the blog. Blogs are organized by date, and so there's an archive where people can go and surf the blog by the date that I made an entry. Uh, there's an area for tags, there's a blog role, categories, and so forth. Now going back to the home page, you'll notice that all of these options are not available. There's some additional information in the sidebar and there's some information here that's directly related to the blog, such as categories and archives, that's not showing on the pages. Now this is a function of my theme that I have created for to power my website, beersdesign.com. So based on the theme, your sidebar may be the same. I wanted to use this theme, for example, because of the fact that in most cases, a lot of my clients would like to have a website and a blog, and they want them to match, and they want to be able to easily update their website or their blog, and they want to be able to do it all in one place um, and not have to learn a lot of, um, you know, multiple platforms and multiple uh, ways of managing that way they have one central location to uh, create, edit their pages, and also post to their blog. So this is a good example of how sidebars can be created for your regular website pages. And then also, in addition to that, we can also put into the theme uh, the elements in the blog area that you would expect to find in a blog. So we're going to talk about the difference between pages and posts. Basically, the main difference is simply how it looks on the front end to your user. It's nice to have this kind of visual separation. I've done some sites that have quite a bit of difference between the look of their, their website and their blog. And if you notice, there's no comments here. There could be comments on pages, but 
most people want their website area of their site to look more traditional and not to look like a blog. So as you can see, this has been achieved with this theme that I created. Now, to manage the content, if I want to manage a page, I simply go to Pages, and you can see Home, About, all of these pages listed. And this is the same navigation we have here. It corresponds exactly. So if I wanted to edit my home page, I would just click Edit, and I would edit my home page. You can see the contents here are the same as what you find here. If I wanted to create a new blog post, or if I wanted to edit a blog post, I would come into this section. When we click Edit, you can see the titles that I have that echo the titles that you saw a moment ago when I was scrolling down the blog page. The editor works exactly the same in WordPress <clears throat> for pages and for posts. It's the same functionality. There are a few different options for pages versus posts, and those are discussed in the specific videos I have about creating pages and creating posts. But in essence, everything functions very much the same. So you don't have to learn multiple methods of managing your content. You have everything right back here in the WordPress dashboard. But according to your theme, you can have a very um, intuitive blog set up for your blog pages, what someone would expect from a blog. But then you can also power your regular website pages and have them look like a more traditional website. So as you see, WordPress is actually a very excellent content management system that's highly customizable and extremely easy to use. So that's it for this segment. I hope it's helped you understand the differences between pages and posts and what's possible using WordPress. As a client, you can gain access to additional training videos on more advanced features of WordPress. If you're interested in a custom website or WordPress blog theme, please visit my site at beersdesign.com. Thank you for watching and have a great day.